Hey guys, this is Irish from the LDC Now podcast. That would be a cool idea to show you what my desktop looks like. And maybe in a series of videos show you how to get from a basic standard to what you see here. What you see here is actually a window manager called i3. If you remember back in episode 3, Revenge of the Tux, Morningstar, you know, just did a little brief description about the differences between a desktop environment and a window manager. I thought I would just reiterate what uh, he mentioned in that video. The different, the big difference between a desktop environment and a window manager is that a desktop environment is all eye candy, all flashy. It takes like the GTK toolkit or QT applications and incorporates it into the desktop environment. Like you see the special effects uh, in Compies or in uh, KWIN and you have the explosions and you have the cube and all that stuff. That's a desktop environment. A window manager is what it sounds like. It manages the windows. You don't have any flashy effects. It's just a basic bare bones system that doesn't get in the user's way. One of the other big aspects of between a desktop environment and a window man and a window manager is that a desktop environment really uses up a lot of CPU and a lot of RAM just to put it in. You know, if you have the hardware, you know, good that uh, you can run that and it'll just fly if you have like a like a solid state drive but if you have limited hardware or don't have much space then a window manager might be best for you uh, like the big difference that I used to run GNOME and right off from a cold boot you would just see I would see like maybe 500 to 600 megabytes being used just off of a cold boot in window managers you might see 100 maybe 200 300 at most uh, megs used and that's you know after a given time it will raise but not by much I thought I would just show you what uh, you know take a little small tour around the i3 window manager it is a tiling window manager which means that any window that you open will tile to the screen and it will not leave any single uh, space in between the desktops or between the applications so right now you can see it just you can keep on tiling until your heart's content but right here on the bottom is your it's called the i3 status bar and right over here is your virtual workspaces or your workspaces uh, you just have an i3 manager you have 1 through 10 so I could have 10 workspaces open with as many applications as my heart can content and then the cool part with i3 is that it has a built-in system tray which is over here this has, you know, just has my basic Wi-Fi, my basic, uh, you know, volume, my own cloud, my Dropbox, my simple screen recorder, and my mumble. And then it just shows if I, if my wireless is degraded, you know, my battery, my CPU usage, my volume, and then the calendar. Again, all of this is very tweakable and very simple to understand. Just to show you guys, this right here is just, you know, a simple key. So you can see what keys I'm pressing as I'm going along in this miniature tutorial. So to get anything going, so say I wanted to open up my I, my, ter my terminal. All I do is press mod, which is my alt key, and then enter and that would bring up my terminal and I can do whatever update my system do whatever but say I wanted to have two of them open 
you just press it again. So it would just, it goes to the right. It keeps tiling to the right until you say stop. So right now it is tiling horizontal. That's the only issue that I really have in i3 manager is that they got the vertical and the horizontal mixed up. So to get to vertical you press Alt V and then you go and they say that's vertical but if you've taken any math courses and done any you know basic graph thing this is horizontal this is vertical. So that's the only thing that I have any really major issues with between them. So say you want to go back to, horse, to vertical, V for vertical, as you go here, and then say you want to go back to horizontal, you just press mod key, H, and then enter. To exit, if say you wanted to exit out of these programs, you just press Alt, Shift, Q, and then you just press, keep pressing them until you come back here. Now the the cool thing is that the only other issue actually that I have that i3 doesn't come with is stuff to make your terminal like this transparent. It doesn't come with one you have to install one like uh, Compton or any of the other um, um, programs that can make your terminal nice and transparent. I use Compton. It's nice and simple that way. Another thing it does not come with is uh, a, an application to get your uh, your wallpapers here. Now you can use Fay, which is F-E-H, which I have tried. It's not too bad, but I use Nitrogen. This is what you see. This is what I can use to get my wallpapers and change my wallpapers and all that. But let me show you some more uh, basics on the tiling aspects. Say you just don't want it to tile like this. Say you wanted, like in a web browser, you have different tabs. Say you wanted to tab your different uh, applications. So you would just press Alt and then S. So that would tabbed and that tabbed. I'm sorry, I meant stacked. So these are in stacking mode. I do apologize. So to get it back, you would do Alt E, Alt E, Alt E, and then it's back. Say you wanted to tab them. I'm sorry, it is say you wanted to sta uh, tab them like you like you have them in a web browser then you just click alt and then w for tabbing and now it looks just like a tab like you would so if I have any more they would just tab just like in a web browser say I wanted to go back and then I would just press alt e say I wanted to stack them you just press Alt S and then all of them are stacked. I personally don't use the tabbing or the stacking aspect of i3 but I still feel like that is one of the coolest aspects that you could have and they again they don't use a single wasted space between each of these applications. But again, you know, I can have different applications open. I could have, you know, Firefox open, which to get any applications, since there's no application launcher or anything else like that, we use a program called D-Menu. By opening that up, it's, it's Alt-D, and then you just wanted to do Firefox, you just type in Firefox and bam Firefox is open but say you also wanted to have a say 
another terminal open. So you just do mod key or alt and then enter. So you can, you know, you know, while browse the web and update your system. But say you wanted more screen to be taken up by the web browser instead of the terminal. So right now they're splitting it 50-50. So you just go to, so you would hover your mouse over to the web browser and you go R, or sorry, Alt R and then you can adjust the screen to your liking. This is the resize mode. So say I want it like that, I just exit out right there. But say I want that like that, but I want this to be in floating mode. There's a floating mode also. So you do Alt, Shift, then Space. So the second one would go, and then to move this window, you press Alt and then the right key, the left key of your mouse, and then you can move it how you want it. To move it back, you do Alt, Shift, Spacebar, and then it's back to the to the tiling mode. Again, this is just very basic stuff that it's may look simple at first, but once you start using it, you may forget a few things here and there, but it is, uh, again, I cannot say anything highly. I have high regards for the devs of this window manager, and hopefully they keep coming back with even better features. Um, in the next video, I can take a look at the config file and show you you know how plain it is it's very plain that anyone else can read you don't have to know like a computer program you don't have to know Java C um, Ruby or anything else like that it is in plain English so in the next video I will show you what that looks like and if you guys are still interested in it I will show you how to do from a basic i3 from the default setup to what you see here. Until next time, I will catch you guys later.